Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. But E.E. E. Calloway is content, for he has found the Garden of Eden. The truth makes you free, says the country lawyer. I've studied the Bible and walked these woods, and I can prove that this is paradise. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. This sacred spot contends Calloway, is here to the east of the Apalachicola River in the unspoiled country of the Florida Panhandle. Here grow trees pleasant to the sight, including gopher trees, the long-needled torea which Noah used to build the ark. A Baptist minister, Callaway started his search after discovering several petrified logs of the wood near the park. That says the woods of fire, he says of the discovery, and here his quest ends, where the river winds its way through the green loveliness of his Eden all described and documented in his book. Well, Mr. Calloway, you say that this is the Garden of Eden. There it is. I think, there. I think about in the center of the garden, north and south. The Garden of Eden, east and west, is not over 10 miles wide, paralleling the river from Chattahoochee down to Bristol, but you're right in the center of it here at Toria State Park north and south between Chattahoochee and Bristol. Well now according to the Bible the Garden of Eden must have trees pleasant to the sight and it must have gold and onyx stone and a river of four heads. Is this one of the rivers? This is the Pison River which is mentioned in the second chapter of Genesis when it says a river went out of Eden to water the garden and parted and became into four heads. The tree life from Chattahoochee to Bristol is the largest of any other area in the world. The Bible names 28 trees. The best authority on earth have identified 27 of them here, and many, many more, including the gopher wood tree. The Bible names those four river heads as the Pison, the Gihon, or Gihon, the Hidekel, and the Euphrates. The first one was the Pison. The Bible says that is it that compasses the land of Havilah, which was North Florida before the flood, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is G-double-O-D. The Bible used that adjective to describe the North Florida gold to further tie down the exact location of the Garden of Eden. The next verse says there's also Bedellum there which is nothing but rosin out of pine trees that God instructed Noah to pitch the ark out of, and onyx stone, which is marble. And North Georgia, right where this great river has its source, is one of the largest marble areas in the world. The Tate Marble Quarry and company there, Tate, Georgia, is one of the largest. So the natural monuments definitely mentioned and described in the Bible as being related to the Garden of Eden are here, and they are not anywhere else on this earth. Well, not only are we sitting in the Garden of Eden, but we're also sitting in an area where you say Noah built the ark. Noah built the ark out of gopher wood, which God selected himself for him to build it out of. Is this the only place that this you know This is the of? only place on this earth where it has ever grown. It's the most peculiar wood on earth. You can take a piece of it the size of this match when it's green. You can't break it. You can twist it and turn it. It's the lightest wood on earth. I have had its fibers, its structure, its uh, every phase of it chemically analyzed. There's no other wood on earth like it. It's the lightest, and Noah built the ark out of wood not very far from you, where you and I are sitting here at Toria State Park. It was loaded, and then it floated five months and landed on Mount Arad, where we know definitely that it's now embedded in the ice. Now, there are four rivers, four rivers that are necessary for the Garden of Eden. What are the four rivers here? A river went out of Eden to water the garden, says the second chapter of Genesis, and it parted and became into four heads. The Pison, the Gison, the Hidekel, and the Euphrates. 
That is the only four red head river system on this earth. When the idea or the notion or the belief that the Garden of Eden was somewhere else or over in Europe or, some, or in Africa or someplace over there, the Western Hemisphere was unknown. They did not know that the continent existed west of the Atlantic Ocean. Therefore, they couldn't search this continent along with the others to find the river of four heads and these other great natural monuments which the Bible said was related to the Garden of Eden. It came my pleasure and my responsibility and my duty to search the North American continent and definitely point out the same bare natural monuments that the Bible relates to. Callaway points with pride to the official map of the U.S. engineers at Chattahoochee, which shows what Callaway says is the only forehead river system in the world. That is a system described in the Bible, where in Genesis, the river flowing out of Eden, which waters the garden, parts and becomes into four heads. First there is the Gion, now known as the Flint River, which flows towards the land of Ethiopia. Then the Euphrates, the Spring Creek River, whose name was transferred to the Middle East after the flood. The Heidekel River is Fishpond Creek River, which borders the land of ancient Assyria. And finally, the last of the four rivers, the wide and lovely Paisan, the Chattahoochee, today a river of trade and commerce. The Apalachee Cola seems an unlikely name for the river flowing through Eden, but here, according to Callaway, is the heart of the garden. This peaceful river is the life source of the lush vegetation of the original habitat of the first man and woman. According to Callaway, the names of these rivers and the lands surrounding them were transferred to the other side of the world when after floating in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, Noah and his family landed on Mount Ararat in Turkey. The legend of the bountiful garden too was transferred to the Middle East where archaeologists have searched in vain for a forehead river system such as described in the Bible. Well, Mr. Callaway, everyone knows the story about the Garden of Eden and the tree of knowledge. Do you know where the tree of knowledge existed in this garden and was it an apple tree? The word apple or the plural apple is not even mentioned in the book of Genesis. That's been added on by fiction and superstition. The Bible mentions apple or apple three times but it's speaking of the apple of the eye because it's in the shape of some apples you know. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is a spiritual tree. God told Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in the 16th verse of the second chapter of Genesis of every tree of the garden, of the fruit of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. There was not any forbidden fruit in the garden. But he told them in another verse, there's one in here, that if you eat that you shall die. And that's the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mother Eve thought a good long time before she made up a decision whether or not to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And she decided that she'd rather live the 70 years that God had promised them by knowing good from evil and then die rather than live on a parity with a totally insane person or an animal forever in paradise and never know right from wrong. There is a certain magic here in the heart of these woods, for they are special woods to one man. To him, this sanctuary of nature is more than interesting, its loveliness more than coincidental. It is planned and deliberate. The beauty of this forest contains not only the serenity and quiet of unspoiled and unpillaged land, but the mystery of life and creation itself. The idea, the intimation, and finally for him, the proof that this is Eden, crowns this green glen, that wooded hill, this flowing river, with purpose. They are tangible elements of a beginning that is buried in the hearts of all men, a beginning shrouded in the mists of time and tradition, a beginning that is believed but unproven. For where, after all, did it happen? Was it here or there, east or west, in a now modern city or in a forsaken desert where no man lives? 
Calloway answers a confusion by saying simply, it happened here. He knows because he was meant to know, and for him this is no ordinary place. He has discovered the secret of this forest, its purpose and its meaning. Paradise lost has been for him and those who believe him regained, and for one man that is his reward. The key to Eden is gopher wood, the Torreya evergreen. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, said the Lord to Noah, and gopher wood grows only in this park. The tree produces a buoyant wood that would be suitable for the building of an ark. The logs of petrified gopher wood, which Callaway discovered here, he said, were sawed off good and smooth, just like a chainsaw would have done. This is a part of the beauty of the Garden of Eden. When the recent storm Agnes was coming up through the Gulf, my friends and neighbors were calling me and warning me to board up or leave there. I said, go back and go to sleep, go to bed. God's not going to destroy the Garden of Eden. When it got out of Apalachicola, it parted and one half went up through Tallahassee and the other Panama City. And just as it got north of Chattahoochee out of the garden, it went back together and spanked the hell out of them from there on to New England. I've pointed out to man, I've proven it by natural monuments, the same as are described in the Bible, and I've given him a direction as to how to go there. And they're going to come here by the tens of thousands, not gamblers and crooks and speculators, but the finest men and women on this earth, to come here and feel, feel, you feel something here you don't feel anywhere else in the world. This is Diane Conklin, 4 p.m. in the Torreya State Park.